Hi everyone, this is Alalu Moronkola from NAP Media Touch. In this video, I want to show you how to get the elements of design into your workspace using CorelDRAW. Today, I will show you how to use the basic tools and features of CorelDRAW to create and manipulate different elements of design such as lines, shapes, colors, text, textures, and images. By the end of this video, you will be able to use this element to create your own graphic design in CorelDRAW. Let's go. The first element of design is line. A line is a connection between two points in space. It can be straight, curved, thick, thin, solid, or dotted lines. Lines can create shapes, patterns, textures, and movements. They can also guide the height and divide the space. To draw a line in Corridor, you can use the free hand tool or the bezier tool from the toolbox on the left side of the screen. This is where you will see the line tool and when you click on this button here the first one shown here is the free hand tool and to have access to the second one i mentioned you will hold down your left mouse button on this small arrow that is beneath this small button here so it shows other button so the most popular one i do use is the free hand and the bezier tool so how do you insert the two into your workspace so let's start with the free hand tool first so you click on the free hand then what you do is click at one point then move your mouse to the other point then you click again but if you notice what i draw is not that straight so to draw a very straight line to snap it to a divine direction so you have to click here then you hold down shift and move your mouse towards the direction you want the line to go so the line can be horizontal like this or you move towards the vertical direction you can choose to be at any angle so as it's moving it's snapping to a particular angle it could be angle 30 angle 45 angle 60 angle angle 70 and so on and so forth like that until you get to vertical line which is like angle 90 so which di whichever direction you want to go, just click and move the mouse to the extent of the length you want it to go and to ensure that you are still holding the shift button on your keyboard then once you, are, you have reached the exact speed you want your line to be, just click the left mouse button then you remove your hand from the shift button on your keyboard so you can do other things with the line but for now let's stop here that's how you get your line into your workspace using the free hand tool so the second tool which you can use to get your line into your workspace is the bezier tool so what you do is that you click on the bezier tool this one is also the same thing you click then this one will not indicate the line or you hold your hand you move your hand also to a particular place then you click again so if you want it to be straight the same way so once you are done you can see now as i'm clicking the line continue to create itself so once you are done creating the line can press enter on your keyboard so this will signal or this will send signal to the tool that you are done 
creating your line so you just stop like that so that's how you bring your line to into your color draw workspace the next element of design is shape a shape is a closed form that has a defined boundary it can be geometry such as circles squares triangles or organic such as blobs splashes flowers to draw a shape in color draw you can use any of the shape tools from the toolbox on the left side of the screen this is the section for the shape the section for the shape is here below the line tool that we just used so to insert these shapes you can just click on any of these shapes here this like artistic media this is also a shape or we can refer it to as a blob but let's focus on these three buttons first so to click on this one you click on the square here so in order to get it into your workspace so you hold down you click and hold down the left mouse button once you get to your desired shape size or volume you remove your hand and here it is you have inserted a shape into your workspace so this can be redefined reshaped reduced in any form so to do that you can go back to the tip to here and use the nodes around here to resize or reshape the shape that you have drawn you can move the tip to to these nodes here and once it turns to a double edged arrow it means that you can drag it forward or backward so that's how you get this square shape into your workspace so let's try to get our an x ellipse shape into a workspace also so this is ellipse this can be used to make circles over shapes and everything related so once you click on this one you click once move your mouse to the workspace then click and drag the mouse again so you can see that as i'm dragging it looks flexible and if i just release my hand at any point like that we are not getting a perfect circle so this thing is like over shape so in order for you to get this perfect circle you remember what you did while we were drawing line you hold down the shift button to let the line go straight but in this case you are going to hold down the control button while you are drawing you can see the circle is now perfect you hold down your mouse and as you are moving holding down the control key the circle remains perfect so once you are done desired shape you remove your hand from the mouse then you remove your hand from the control key again so when you want to resize this perfect shape using the pick tool you don't resize from the side you resize from the corners the diagonal so you resize it diagonal so that you will not distort the perfectness of the shape so we have other shapes here that you can insert in the same way just click on them these are this is polygon and when you click on the arrows you can see that all the three buttons here has their own arrow so you don't really need all this one i don't use it so and this one also i don't really use it so but this one we have other ones that might be useful for you underneath so you see polygon star spiral common shape so all these ones are just simple shapes but these common shapes housed other shapes underneath so let's see where we can access other shapes you can see it's pluralized which means that there are other shapes underneath so what you do is to 
just click on it and the property here at the property bar at the top here changes so you can simply see the shapes here under this small dot under the button so when you click it will display for you all that shape so the same way we've added this previous shape the same way this one also will be added just click on any one then draw them so this one comes with its own perfectness so you don't really need because it's like smile smiley okay so you don't really need to Good control for this one because it's already perfect. So the next element of design is color. Color is the result of light reflecting of an object. It has three properties: hue, which is the exact name of the color, value or luminance, which is the lightness or darkness of the color, and saturation which is the intensity or purity of the color to choose a color in color draw you can choose any color on the right side here it's always there by default whenever you open a color draw or when you first install a color draw software you will always find this color at the right side here unless it has been removed by someone before you come around to use the software so but if you open this place and you are unable to see this color palette here you can come to window and come to color palettes then you click on default palette and default palette so this will show the colors on the left side and in the higher fashions of color draw they have included this one which is the document color which we show below here above the status bar which will indicate every colors that you have just used in your document so that's that and on these lines of color that are here there are several other colors that are just the base color that you can use on your work so the, we have arrow here there is an arrow here you can click or you click on the double arrow that is facing right here so when you click it will display other colors that are available so you can make use of this one or you can mix your own color by yourself using the interactive field tool that you have here so when you click on the interactive fit tool you can click on this first one which is the uniform fit so, so let's try to draw shape since you already learned how to insert shape into your workspace so let's draw a perfect square and let's try to add a color to it so here you can add color blue so let me add another shape which is an ellipse to form a perfect circle so let me add another color red so let me choose from this one the polygon so let me draw a perfect polygon and i will go through this process to add a color to it instead of coming here to just choose a default color i can just come to this interactive tool this panel will show up here on the property bar when you click on this option here a default color will be added or there's a way you can still have more control of the color that is here if you click on this arrow we have access to this color picker which you can have we will have access to the three properties of the color so this one below here is the hue the exact color why this one here the horizontal movement here is the saturation of the color why the vertical movement is the luminance 
of the color which is the value of that color so you can move this small square to go around and to pick any value of color that you have if you already if you are working in cmyk and you already have the value of each colors that you want to use this is cyan magenta yellow and black so it represents all the four colors that are useful when you are designing for prints and we have other color modes that you can use the one i mostly use the cmyk for printing projects and the rgb for projects that will be displayed on screen so this one also have their own values so if you want me to dive more into this aspect please let me know in the comment section so here you can move the box to whichever area you want to pick after you have chosen a specific view here so you can maneuver around with the luminance and the saturation of their color to give you the exact thing that you are looking for so you can now click and close this aspect so with this you have selected a default color that is different from the ones that is here so this is just basically how you can get color into your design there are some other aspects which this video will not be able to contain to dig deep into this please let me know in the comment section but before we go we previously draw line as our first element so let's draw line again but as you can see all these shapes also pass their line so how do you get line color how do you get line color is by selecting the object you have you want to you want to apply the line color to then come to the color area or any of the color that you have, might have missed that year just let's say i want to give it an orange color so then you will just need to right click so if you look very well then an orange line color has been added so for lines so how you apply line color is by right clicking on any of these colors so even if you draw just a simple line let me draw a single line i want it to be straight so i would shift so this is my line i want to give the line color i'm zooming this screen using my scroll wheel so you can simply right click on the color that you want to see now it has changed from black to blue so that's how you apply color both the fill color and the line color the next element of design is text text is composed of letters which are essentially shapes that have a specific meaning and function to add text in correct draw just go to straight to the two box here then you find this letter a button so you can see it's showing us the button the shortcut button you can use to bring out the two so as for other tools that we have been using as you click the tool will be displayed in this form and you can start creating your text with it so what you do to insert text is to click anywhere now when i click you can notice a vertical line that is being located where i just clicked so that line is called a cursor so as it's blinking that's where whatever you type on your keyboard will show so let me type something this is a text so once you are done typing you can go back select the picture then you apply other things you want to apply to your text i'm not going to that today now this text i just applied is called an artistic text it is an artistic text because i just go straight to the text button then i click anywhere i want so this one that i've clicked 
doesn't have a boundary. So whatever I'm typing, as I'm typing on and on, the text will just continue to go as long as it will go. But if you want your text to be bounded, to have a restriction of where it will go and where it can stop, so that even if you have multiple lines of text, you'll be able to control their properties at the same time. So you will need another type of text which is paragraph text so it's still the same way the only difference is that after you might have selected the tools so instead of just clicking once here you need to draw an a banding box so this does not mean that this box will show when you print your design or when you are sending out your design for this screen display the line is just there to find your text so that if you are typing a text that has multiple lines it will be confined within this box so let's type typing like this so i'm just typing something now a particular language sorry me any other thing in some other people's language so you can see now when it get to this binding line the text i was typing dropped down by it, by itself so it is usually used for paragraph as the name implies paragraph text the first one is for artistic purpose if what you are applying is just a single text something you want to be bold you want to give a special decorative font another that types of uh, an all other design so that's when you use this artistic text or you use paragraph text for multiple lines of text especially when you are typing speeches letters and everything so you can add other properties to you can add color like we did the other time since we've learned about color you can add color to your element which is the text element the same way we add color to so the text also can have a line but initially it doesn't come with line but once you apply line color a line will be added and there is a way you can manipulate the line to make it look real and nice on the text the next element of design is texture Texture is the surface quality of an element. It can be tactile, how it feels to touch, or visual, how it looks to see. Texture can create interest, creative realism, and mood. It can also enhance or diminish the other elements. To add texture in color draw, you can use one of the free tools from the toolbox on the left side of the screen and you ought to have made a shape or a text you want to add the texture to just like the way we add color so you can add texture by coming down to this left toolbox then you choose the interactive free tool and move on to any of these shapes so we you have here texture fill texture fill so you can click and it has so many different pieces of textures that you can add and you can take control of all these textures also you can see this one has blue and white so you can change the color by coming to the property here you can edit this fill can edit it to your own desired color so we have different settings here that you can manipulate to come up with a distinct texture for your design so like now this blue color you can change this blue color to your desired color by manipulating or working through this color picker so you can see as i'm changing the color here the color is adjusting itself if the blue that was there before is too bright you can lower the luminance down and you 
over the saturation so to give you your desired texture once you are done and just click ok so this can be applied to the text or the or any shape that you have drawn so you can make this texture a full background of your document assuming if i am to design something on this entire page so it means that i'll need to increase this texture to cover the whole of the page then i will start typing on it there are so many other things you can still do with this property with this object there are so many other things you can still do with this but for now let's stop here the last element of design i would like to talk about is an image image is a representation of an object or scene in a visual form it can be realistic such as a photography or a painting or abstract such as a symbol or a logo i refer to image as anything that is in raster form that you are bringing into your design this cannot really be created inside CorelDRAW. They are like objects that you bring from another source into your CorelDRAW workspace in order to make your work neat or more appealing. There are several sources you can get images, just as files that are copied from somewhere, such as scanners, cameras, from free parts, pages, or web pages, or from some free website pages now you have your image for instance i can go online and search for a particular image for from the website so i search for something like joyful baby so i find one of the baby there then I copy and paste into my design. So this is a raster object. So I refer to them as image, which are part of the elements of design, which I use in my design. Because I might need to put text and other shapes on this shape, on this one, to bring out something unique. And there are so many other things I can do on the image to make it blend with my work. I hope you've learned something new on how to bring all the elements that you will need to create a professionally looking design into your CorelDRAW workspace. If you have any question or feedback, please let me know in the comment section. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials on graphic design and printing thank you for watching see you next time